perspective that we've now published in ACS Energy Letters uh, motivates a certain approach to lithium sulfur batteries. And the first question you might have is why lithium sulfur? Well, the theoretical specific energy of lithium sulfur batteries is extremely high owing to the low molecular weights of both sulfur and lithium. The challenge is, is that current existing commercialized lithium sulfur batteries have low energy density, low watt hours per liter, and low cycle life. And so we believe the best path forward for lithium sulfur to move beyond sort of the niche applications it has today to widespread commercialization is something we call operating lean, right? And so the lean electrolyte challenge is essentially creating high energy density lithium sulfur cells that also run thousands of cycles that something like a transportation application will actually need. The way we approach this challenge is to think about redesigning these electrolytes essentially from the ground up. Uh, we view, and what we're specifically after is creating an electrolyte that's capable of supporting the types of rates, the power that we need, and the stored energy content that we're trying to achieve in practical lithium sulfur batteries. And the key to that is reducing the amount of electrolyte that exists in these batteries. So in this perspective, we're motivating the use of sparingly solvating electrolytes with protected lithium metal as a means to achieve high energy density and long cycle life. So why would one want to use a sparingly solvating electrolyte? Well, for two main reasons. The first is, in the solid state, you always have intrinsically higher charge density, and that directly translates to a higher energy density than you would if you fully dissolved your reactant intermediates. Secondly, with the low solubility of polysulfides in the electrolyte, you are inherently controlling polysulfide migration, the so-called shuttle effect. In this perspective, beyond presenting the motivation for why we need to reach lean electrolyte operation and why sparingly solving electrolytes are the way to do it, we also present design rules for how someone could select or create electrolytes with only sparingly solubility of polysulfides. This redesign idea takes advantage of the fact that there's a number of constituents in the battery that have to work together. Overall, our goal with the sparingly solvating electrolyte is to essentially control the solubility of these polysulfide uh, discharge products that we're forming, uh, control the residence time in the liquid electrolyte uh, for specific key intermediates, and in doing so, essentially guide or alter the reaction pathway, all with the intent of achieving high power and high, the high energy density that lithium sulfur, sulfur batteries promise. The design rules for achieving solubility and mobility of lithium supporting salt, not uh, lithium polysulfide, falls within the categories of limited solvent and selective solvent. In the limited solvent class, the electrolytes are designed to have a minimum amount of solvent um, so that the solvents will all coordinate with lithium support salt, leaving none left to coordinate and solvate uh, lithium polysulfide. Designing a selective solvent that overcomes the challenges of the limited solvent can be achieved through three different strategies. So the first strategy is to mix a limited solvent with a co-solvent. The co-solvent should have low viscosity, so mixing will actually lower the viscosity and improve the transport property of the limited solvent. The second strategy for selective solvent is to tune solvating power of the solvent to be strong enough to solubilize lithium supporting salt, but too weak to solubilize lithium polysulfide. A third and final strategy for achieving selective solvation is to use the difference between the ion of lithium salt and lithium polysulfide as the driving force for selective solvation. This solvation approach requires favorable binding of a salt ion uh, to the solvent through, for example, an anion binding agent. So lots of work remains to really produce a lean electrolyte lithium sulfur battery that uses sparingly solvating electrolytes. Uh, paramount to this will be the protection and control of the lithium metal anode, as in any battery that hopes to use lithium metal as a negative electrode. So the Joint Center for Energy Storage Research is an energy innovation hub funded by the U.S. Department of Energy Basic Energy Sciences Office. And in addition to the authors on this manuscript, there are likely 20 other individuals, our colleagues that we work with, um, that have really helped shape 
this way of thinking um, and continue to work on trying to make this approach successful today. Hey. <laughs>